after a lesson, I am going to encourage practice and will quality practice versus quantity practice, which means that you're likely going to find a practice facility that you can use and work on your skill. Many women are very, very anxious about this because they are going to be uncomfortable in that environment. The old feeling that everybody is so much better than me or everybody is looking at me. I think we got to get over that because everybody's there for the same goal. They're practicing to improve their skill development. The other thing is when the time comes to transition onto the golf course, there is a feeling with many women golfers, I can't go on the golf course until I'm good. Well, first of all, how are you going to get good unless you go out on the golf course? So every time I do a ladies clinic, I, I address this very thing because I want them to get on the golf course. It's much more enjoyable than on the range. And that means that you don't have to worry about keeping a score. Just keep pace and just start using your skills that you're learning out there. There's going to be good and not so good shots. Big deal. Pick up the ball, move ahead and, and, and play onward just so you get comfortable out there. I love to do this in a clinic when we're in Houston we're so hot so we're at the end of the clinic session so I say come on over here we park in the shade and we just visit and wrap it up but I park in the shade near a hole where we're gonna see a lot of golfers come through and this becomes eye-opening for them and also laughable and comical because some of them see their husbands playing whatever and all of a sudden the light bulb goes off like oh my god my husband's not that good or my friend's not that good and that guy hit a house and that woman hit it into the water and look they're like normal they're just playing onward and just kind of moving forward and all of a sudden the reality hits them those people out on the golf course not, aren't necessarily great players. They're like all of us. We're enjoying the game. We hope we have a good day on the golf course, hit some good shots. But you sure see when it's amateur and recreational golf, all kinds of things that happen. It shouldn't keep you from going out there. Because you, if you go out there with the intent that I've got to keep a score, maybe that's not a good goal right now. For a while, it might not be a good goal. Go out there and you know, use, you're paying all this money for a membership. I've had people that haven't been on the golf course for three, four years into their membership. They've been paying dues for so long and they haven't been on the course because they feel like I can't go on the golf course until I'm good. No way. But realizing that they're not gonna hit perfect shots for a while because you're on the road. It's a journey, not a destination. So hit the shots you can, but most important, just feel good about keeping a pace because there's tee times behind you and you'll have an enjoyable day and maybe scoring in the future becomes part of what you wanna do. Maybe not, and it's okay. The equipment affects your motion. And so if you, especially, there's still, it still doesn't happen as much, but there's still out there the idea that some Ladies will use their husband's old clubs just until they're for sure, you know, going to be liking the game. And I'm thinking they're pulling the set from the garage and they're in the garage because their husband doesn't even like them. So why, why are you going to bring those? And finally the joke becomes, are you, do you have his shoes on too? You know, you got to have good rapport with your student to joke like that. And then they kind of go, oh, and then it becomes like they get, yeah, I can see sometimes the, the hand on the hip attitude with, oh my God, you know, he's spending on this. I should be able to spend too. And I go, but she said, but then they kind of say, I don't know if I'm really going to like this game. I, of course, you're going to love this game, I promise. But understanding that, let's get you one, two, three clubs, not a big spend, but that fit you. And then when you decide I'm ready to build to this, build onto the set, we already have three clubs in the set already. And then we just add to that much better experience with your learning and, and uh, enjoyment of, of the process with just getting clubs that fit. Expense-wise, it always seems that golf clubs could be very expensive because we start to price them out and we're choosing brands that are out there that we see a lot of advertising on. Well, the reality of it is you can buy a pretty good set of clubs without spending a lot and still get take advantage of the technology that's out there. Um, your LPGA teaching professional will help you in that area and it usually really is comforting because you're going to get something that is fit to you but also within your budget budget frame because we are knowledgeable in that area. You know, when you find that LPGA professional and you get a nice rapport going and you have a comfort level, that person is your guide, if you will, your resource for everything related to the game. Anything from knowing kind of things about apparel, shoes, other equipment besides your physical golf equipment, that is something that I can tell people are so relieved to know so that they don't make an uneducated, un, un, uneducated spend. And the golf pro, if they're worth their salt, and all of us as LPGA professionals are, they're going to spend that time with you.